hope everybody is getting off to a great start. Uh, it has been definitely quite busy. It got a lot going on. Uh, this is a year where I plan on uh, really uh, stretching myself uh, to be an impact, to be influ uh, influential, uh, to be a catalyst of change, and to elevate my family. So I am going to be going all out. Um, with that in mind, I want to remind everybody that we are still in uh, the midst of a targeted fundraiser uh, for specifically for the Black Men Lead Right of Passage, Passage Initiative. We are still attempting to create a national network uh, through which we can implement a universal rite of passage to integrate and socialize young black males into black manhood. It is immensely important that they are socialized. The sociali proper socialization of young black males reduces the proclivity for violence, for criminality, uh, for waywardness, uh, uh, reduces the risk of dropping out of high school before earning their diploma, which reduces their uh, risk of being incarcerated. Uh, with what everything that's going on in the community right now, this is something that we definitely need. Uh, I will continue to push uh, and continue to ask for support. Uh, something else that we did with the Black Men Lead rite of passage initiative which is simply a rite of passage it's much more actually a rite of passage will get a young man to age 12 or 13 where he uh, graduates into his process of going into a manhood you know with uh, whatever the rite of passage celebration is with Jews as bar mitzvahs and and you know there are other things but uh, we move forward that we literally work with young black males up to the age of 30 in the program uh, we want to give them all the support they need. And while we have always made mental health uh, an active part uh, or component of our uh, processes, we have now started Mental Health and Black Manhood, which is a unique approach to dealing with uh, mental health and specifically integrating it into the manner in which we operate and deal with young black males across the country. And we want to make ourselves available. We, we are planning on creating a safe space for black men to decompress, uh, a safe space for black men to emote, a safe space for black men to admit their vulnerability, talk about their uh, feelings of inadequacy at times, a lot of things that are overwhelming, uh, but definitely to deal with things like this uh, depression, dissociative disorders, and other things that stay lurking in the background, undiagnosed and untreated because black men don't feel comfortable with admitting they have problems because of how they are handled, treated, and labeled. We're going all out with this. This is going to be another part of Black Men Lead that gets a lot of attention because I want black men to get the help they deserve, the help they need, the help they, their families need them to get. And we're seeing far many, too, too many instances of suicide. Uh, we're seeing far too many instances of uh, mental health crisis where police are being called out and end, it, and end up killing uh, young black men who are having a mental health crisis. So we need to also train family members how to deal and cope with someone who may have a form of mental illness. Uh, we must be uh, very cognizant of the fact that having a mental illness is not something to look down upon. Many of us struggle with it and we just don't know we have it. It's, it's, it can be, you can live with it, you can thrive with it, you can excel with it. And uh, it shouldn't be viewed as something dark. It should be viewed as something that we face. Uh, we need to create that space. And so uh, it, 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 it's been on my heart for a while and obviously it takes resources. So I've been sitting on it and sitting on it. Uh, but the recent um, suicide death of Ian Alexander Jr., which is the son of Regina King, and uh, two other 26-year-olds, uh, a friend of a family, I'm not going to say his name because they may want to be pri uh, private, also 
um, fellow alumni, um, Cameron Burrell, who happens to be the son, who is a, a world, who was a world class sprinter in his own right, but the son of Olympic legend Leroy Burrell and the godson of Olympic legend and sprint legend Carl Lewis, uh, committed suicide back in August, and unfortunately those aren't exceptions those aren't anomalies those aren't one-offs those are simply uh, magnified or amplified realities because of who they were uh, people uh, became aware of what was going on we're dealing with this in our communities far too often and so it's it's a time now that we, we need to face this I've been talking about it if you go back and you look I've written about it in at least four books I've talked about it in probably several hundred videos. It's not a new issue with me. It's one of the most uh, torturing realities that I confront because I deal with it every day. I deal with it literally every day. There's someone I'm dealing with that is suffering from mental health. Far too many of them are young black males. Um, so we are going to move forward with this. We are not going to sit around and wait on resources. We're not going to sit around and wait. If you've got someone that needs help, get them to us. If you are someone that needs help, reach out. We are going to find a way to make this work because it's absolutely imperative that we do. Uh, on the flip side of that, if you believe in the work we do, if you believe in the need of programs that facilitate the development, the growth, the empowerment of black men, uh, as well as to support the mental health of black men, support the work we're doing because we have the answers. This isn't some half-baked, scoped idea. We have put in the work. We have done literally years of research. Uh, we have implemented, developed, and implemented programs that have worked, and it's time to scale those programs out. It's time to provide uh, a solution uh, to so many things that I see in our community that are treatable, but they're not getting the attention they need. We, we complain well. We are professional, well-skilled complainers, uh, but when it comes to action, when it comes to facing uh, the world and doing the things we need to do we, we're, we're, we're not measuring up we're not doing the things that are, are required of us so I am calling on you to support the work we do I'm calling on you to be a part of the solution uh, one thing that I uh, promised is that anyone who donates uh, at least $100 will get a free black man lead hoodie uh, we're getting those back in this week and they will be going out um, when you donate just tell us what size you want and we'll get you out we're also working on new colors uh, but again you know we've got to be careful how we manage that but anyway we are at a place where we're gonna have to start being real with ourselves we're gonna have to start understanding the magnitude of what we're dealing with and we are going to have to lose this propensity towards casual assessment and casual engagement as if nothing is really that serious we are finding ourselves rapidly descending into an abyss of no return because we won't address issues that are within the uh, uh, reach of our power to change them it's too easy for us to complain than it is to, it's far more easy for us to complain than it is for us to become actively involved and uh, invested in seeing change and protecting our youth and protecting our, um, our communities. And so once again, I'm going to uh, challenge you to support the work we do to become actively engaged in being a part uh, of change. Change isn't something you wish for. Change isn't something you pray for. Change is a result of someone taking intentional and deliberate action. I'm challenging you to be a part of that.
on that note, I'm checking out of here. I hope everybody is having a great day. I'll hopefully get back in front of you before the day is over, but I had to drop this on you. If you want to sort of see um, uh, what's going on with the Black Men Lead Project, the link is going to be in there. You can uh, see, but we did. We have added uh, mental health, um, mental health in black manhood, and it is meant to cover and deal with and engage any type of mental health issues, emotional issues, overwhelming issues that men are being overwhelmed and stressed with, black men are being overwhelmed and stressed with, and we want them to be able to take advantage of it. So with all that being said, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks in advance for the support, and you guys have an unbelievable day. Hello, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace. I uh, hope everybody's good. Uh, want to revisit something uh, that we've been covering for a while and we will continue to cover. Uh, before I do, I want to remind everybody to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project and specifically our targeted fundraiser that's going on right now for Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage initiative focused on socializing young black males into black manhood uh, with an understanding of everything that they'll be facing as men and to provide resources to men, young black males who may need help in a number of different areas. We provide wraparound sources, sources everything from mental health uh, to family support and other things. Uh, we need your support. The manner in which you can assist and help is in the description box. Um, we've been talking about the state of black America, the state of the black community, and all of the different nefarious forces that are at play uh, when we think about that. And one of the things that I've been talking about a lot lately, specifically, um, are especially with all of the headlines surrounding uh, the suicides of young black uh, men and women, but definitely young black males. We lost a beautiful young sister uh, a little over a week ago. We've lost several black young males in the headlines. And one of the things that I try to hammer home is the gravity of the moment. And what I, what I mean by that is people look at it and they see the headlines and they, okay, there's another one. And people get into it and people talk about it because it's a celebrity or as someone kin to a celebrity. And so there's some level of vicarious connectivity. But here's the truth. For every person that you see in those headlines, it's thousands of young black males uh, and young black women who are losing themselves in this struggle uh, for a number of different reasons. And we're talking about, every, you know, we talk about depression and we see depression. And a lot of people are trained to see depression as just a deep sadness and not understand the forces that lie underneath it. And so we sort of dismiss it. And especially when it comes to black men, we tend to talk about toughening up and manning up and all the other stuff that we hear as young black males growing up that give us the impression that there is something wrong with needing help. Uh, there's something wrong with saying, I can't do it by myself. There's something wrong with saying, I don't know what to do. And so we suffer in silence. We sit back and we pretend to be okay. We give the universal nod of, uh, everything's okay, you know, that, hey man, how's it going? I'm good, you know, I'm good. Nobody's good all the time. And it's gotta be okay not to be good. It's gotta be okay 
to say I need help. It's got to be okay to say, you know what, I'm struggling. It's got to be okay for a black man to be able to go to other black men or go to some space and say, man, I'm struggling with supporting my family without being embarrassed or made to feel less than. It's got to be okay for a black man to say, I'm emotionally drained and I don't know what to do. It's gotta be okay for a black man to say, I feel dark and alone, and it be and, and, and it not be viewed as some form of weakness. We gotta do a lot of work. And I'm talking about more than just creating a space, but we do need spaces for this to take place, but we need more than just creating spaces. We need effective programs that are in place to engage the need. We can't wait until our young black males are in crisis. And for that matter, our young black females. You know, the reason I'm touching on black men is because we're talking about almost a 50% increase since 2013 in the number of suicides in the black community. A 20, I mean, uh, it's gone up Roughly in 2019, it had gone up by 47%, and it's actually been a stark increase since then. So we're probably close to 50% increase in suicide, uh, su actual suicides, not suicide attempts, actual successful suicides are young, among young black males uh, between the ages of 15 and 24. Uh, young black males under the age of 30 are at an all-time high risk of reaching a point of suicide. The report of suicidal ideations is at an all-time high among African-American males. And no one's looking at it. You know, we can deride the black man uh, like no other. We can attack him. We can talk about how sorry and trifling he is. We can talk about how lazy he is. We can talk about all the things uh, while at the, while simultaneously ignoring his heart, his hustle, his drive, his love. We, we find the worst of the worst to be the representation of the whole. And we don't recognize the suffrage this is not to ignore the suffrage of the black woman. And it's a shame that we can't talk about one without making sure we mention the other without being offensive because we've been trained to be in a defensive mode. The moment that one of us speaks about what's wrong with us, the other immediately begins to talk about what about me? Uh, so you don't see what's going on with me. And it's not that I don't see what's going on. I've been a champion for black women my entire life. If you look at my writings, my first book to my 24th and in my 25th book, I acknowledge the plight of our sisters. So it's definitely not that I don't see it, but what we cannot do is put so much emphasis on one thing, because one thing that I had the chance of connecting with Dr. Venus um, in the Healing With Him uh, conference, which is powerful, and I'm hoping that we're gonna do some more things together where we are bringing both groups together and creating an environment where we heal together so we mend as a whole. But the thing is, we've got to get out of the mindset that if I'm talking about I'm hurting, then I'm ignoring the fact that you are. No, what I'm talking about is if we sit up and we create this balance where everything is focused on, look at, look at this, look at this. So if everything's focused on healing the woman, who is the woman going home to? Who is this healed and whole woman going home to? She's going to the unhealed, broken man, the unhealed, angry man. The, and the thing is, it's easy to talk about the black man being angry, but we don't want to talk about why. We want to pretend that there's some inherent dysfunction and, 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 and intellectual and emotional ineptitude that's simply that because he's a black man. We're not going to attribute any of it to the experience of his blackness. We're just going to simply say he's that way because he's a black man and not understand what he's been through. This is not presenting or submitting any type of 
excuse because I hold every man accountable. I've been through some of the worst stuff unimaginable. And every day I wake up trying to be the best version of myself I can be and trying to be the best husband and father I can be and trying to make sure I'm better tom tomorrow than I am today. And I, I don't render excuses, but I know that there are some deficiencies that are still present. There are deficiencies that I have had to overcome that are a part of the heritage of who I am, a black man. And they started when I was a black boy. That's why black men lead is so important because there's no experience like that of the black male because the black male is the greatest threat. Now, I'm not saying that the plight of the black woman isn't horrific, it hasn't been hard, haven't, hasn't been destructive, but the difference is there's a level of disregard and malevolence towards black women that's literally a target on the black man's back and I mean as early as four or five years old we're targeted in the school system I've written on that I've published on that and I've provided plenty of evidence to to, to, to support what I'm saying we're target I, we're, we're targeted I mean in preschool and kindergarten we're targeted and we're labeled and we are we are criminalized. I have literally visited schools on behalf of parents and seen five and six year olds in handcuffs. You don't think that has an impact. You don't think that is a part of normalizing the criminal mindset or the criminality or sending an image, setting an image in the head of youth of the criminal nature of a black man. I've never seen in those schools, and the, uh, some of them were diverse schools, I've never seen no other kid handcuffed. Only black males. Now I've seen some other stuff done to other kids, but as far as that particular image, that's the only time. Again, not presenting any excuses, but I'm saying if we don't deal with that, that kid is gonna grow up and become a problem because they're gonna be alienated in the educational process. And once they become alienated in the academic process, their uh, risk of dropping out skyrockets. And then we know from there that once they drop out, their risk of becoming incarcerated quadruples and even higher increases the rate that they're going to at some point find themselves in the system. And we know that once in the system, the chance of uh, recidivating is 75%. So that means they're gonna get in, come out, and go back at least once, 75%. And so we have gotta understand, we have to prevent that. We have to try to get in ahead of that. We have to try to stop that. We've gotta be aware. Now that also has to be, those are the preventative measures that must be taken, but there also has to be interventive me measures that we are able to intervene and, and, and actually engage after the fact and reach in and grab as many as we possibly can. And we must do this until we reduce the number that get in to a point that it doesn't have an impact on the total movement or the holistic movement of the collective. This is simple strategy that requires energy and effort. We cannot continue to move in the way that we have been moving and expect to achieve any form of autonomy, liberation, and empowerment. We can talk until we're blue in the face. We can have all these great debates and, 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 and intellectual conversations. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to put our boots to the ground. We're going to have to implement programs. We're going to have to truly be 100% in on making things happen for ourselves. And that's something that we have not been doing. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. As I said, whatever you do, show some love, show some support on the work we're doing with black males. Uh, leave comments about what's going on. If you happen to have a son or a daughter, for that matter, that is struggling uh, mentally or emotionally, 
please reach out. Uh, please let us know. Um, we have work to do. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Thank you guys for stopping in.